coming live Sunday, January 28th, 2018, from the Wells Fargo Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Two hours of pre-show, at least four hours of a main card. The WWE proudly presents the 2018 Royal Rumble. yee <laughs> Sunday night is quickly approaching, and we're going to be in for a long one. Not just because of the length of time, but my excitement level for this show right now is about a 4 out of 10. And it has everything to do with the history of the event, that it's one of the oldest WWE pay-per-views, it's one of the big four. It has absolutely nothing to do with the build-up to this year's event specifically. I have found the build-up to this year's event incredibly bad. Not even just like lackluster or lacking. It's just sucked. I have a real hard time remembering the last time I was less enthused for a Rumble, Royal Rumble show. But the WWE went out there and found a way to underwhelm even to my ridiculously low expectations. And maybe something that could help me and hopefully help you, 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 all of you to get at least a little more amped up for the event to come Sunday night is to check out the old OTRS Central Royal Rumble Review Series. I will put the link in the description box down below. It's got, I think, every single Royal Rumble show review in there from 88 to 2017. That's 30 of them bitches. Yeah, maybe that can help, but maybe not. And I don't know what's going to help a lot of us on this night. Alcohol, drugs, Porn. I don't know. But we're going to need something. The pre-show, what do you got? You've got three matches, like a Bobby Roode uh, open challenge for the U.S. title. Um, some lame crap match with the Balor Club against somebody I can't even remember because it's so insignificant. And then what else you got? You've got some random cruiserweight tag match. I ain't watching, and hopefully none of you are dumb enough to do so either. But even when you look at the main card, there's only six matches. Knowing that the show is probably going to go, the main show is going to go about four hours. Now part of that can be filled with the fact that you have two Rumble matches, which makes this show inherently unique in and of itself. And sometimes unique can be good, and sometimes it's unique because you never did it before, because there's a reason you never did it before. And we're going to see Sunday night which one ultimately bans out. Now you got both the Raw and SmackDown Tag Team Championships being defended on the show. The SmackDown side of the house, you got the two out of three falls match between Shelton Benjamin and Chad Gable taking on the Usos. And the Raw side, you've got the Bar versus the Champions Club. Yeah! Jason Jordan for the win! One of these two matches has to have a title change, you would think. You would think, right? Maybe? Maybe not? Um... I would think at this point, while a lot of people are going to point to the Raw Tag Team Championships and saying Rollins and Jordan are going to have a big split here, they're going to lose the belts, and then they're going to be off to the races towards Mania, it feels like it's too early in the game to split them up. Like, you could split them up at the Elimination Chamber in February. You could split them up on a Raw. Just because you could do it now doesn't mean you have to do it now. And it almost feels like the story works better if these guys actually retain their belts at the Rumble. So I'd be surprised if the bar just won them back here uh, for the sake of advancing a story between Rollins and Jason Jordan when you've still got well over two months until WrestleMania. Maybe the Usos would lose as punishment for uh, the DUI arrest. Uh, but other than that, there's no real reason for the Usos to lose the straps here. They're, they're, they've been too good, and frankly, they deserve to walk into Mania as the champs at this point. Because I don't know if either one of these belts are going to change hands, and I don't know if any of the belts that are being defended, four of them total, are going to change hands this night. So that could be a kind of a weird thing. You've got your two world title matches. The handicap match for the WWE title between Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. I don't even want to call them what they're calling themselves because that's stupid. Uh, taking on AJ Styles, the face that runs the place on SmackDown. And then you've got that universal title triple threat between Kane, Braun Strowman, and Brock Lesnar. And the real dope here is, 
from a real dope. These are two world title matches that I could give a crap less about. I couldn't care less about. And that and that's the truth of the matter. I just don't care. Because I look at AJ Styles in a two-on-one handicap match with Owens and Sami Zayn. If these two guys win the title, then that makes AJ Styles look stupid. But I feel like it also makes them look stupid because they had to win two-on-one in order to get the title. But if AJ wins and these two guys lose, then it makes them look stupid and pointless and perhaps that's better for everybody. It's just like... You boxed yourself into a corner here with a lose-lose situation. And it seems like it's still more about Daniel Bryan and Shane McMahon and what's going on there. And and frankly, who the hell knows at this point? What direction are they going? That's what I don't know. That's what I don't get. And maybe we'll find out come Sunday which direction they're going. Uh, But I would expect AJ Styles to retain. Um, It'd just be really weird to have co-champion. just... It sounds dumb, and maybe I'm completely wrong, and they will go in that direction, but I don't want to see this become some stupid-ass excuse for another Owens and Zayn match at any point in time in WWE. Can we get something else, please? Oh, my God. And then Kane, Braun Strowman, and Brock Lesnar. We all know Kane is there to eat the pin. Braun will do monster crap. And then Lesnar will hit 1F5 on Kane when Strowman's taken out of the action, and it'll be all she wrote. It's that feeling of inevitability, that ultimate aura of doom over this match, that you feel like you know Lesnar's winning, and you know what that's setting up for at WrestleMania. Nap time. That's exactly what the hell it's setting up for, is nap time. So... A WWE Championship match at a big four pay-per-view, I give a crap less because I think the whole premise and the stipulation is stupid. Then the Universal title match, to me, is stupid and pointless because we all feel like at this point, unless there is a gigantic swerve of epic proportions, which is not coming, we know who's going to win and we know what it's going to lead to. And it's that bad. So really, this show is ultimately going to hinge on the success of it, and I know, I know, some people are going to talk about, ooh, the match quality, man, the bumps, oh my god, the spots, they were awesome, who gives a crap? It's going to come down to the two Royal Rumble matches. You got the women's Royal Rumble match, where they're going to try and put 30 women in there, and I wonder if they have even decided where they're going to get 30 women from, because... As of the time of this recording, only 18 spots were officially filled. That leaves 12 women you've still got to put in that match. And even with a combination of Legends and NXT people, this is insane. To sit there and spend weeks pumping this up, weeks promoting this, and still not bother to have, what, 40% of the damn lineup for the match announced. It just speaks to the poor planning to me of WWE. Just really, really dumb. Especially because they did the exact same thing with the damn men's match. And with the men's match, you can at least say they have more than enough men between Raw and SmackDown to fill out the damn freaking match. You could at least get to 25, 26 announced ones and leave the potential for a few surprises. So where the hell are these other 12 women going to come from? And then with the announcement of Stephanie McMahon doing commentary on this match, and you feel like you know this is going to lead to something, maybe her actually entering the Rumble at some point, her being involved with somebody else being in there, but are we seriously going to have to listen to Stephanie McMahon on commentary the entire time? She is the epitome of one of these entitled bitches that nobody can ever tell her how bad she is at what she actually does. Because they're all afraid of the consequences because her daddy wields all this power. Her personality is grating. Her voice is annoying. And her flippy floppy shtick gimmick is absolutely ridiculous and it doesn't benefit anybody. Most especially the roster and the product. So, sign me up to listen to an entire match of Stephanie McMahon commentary. Heading into this, though, let's, let's keep it real. What possibly makes you think that this match won't suck 
other than maybe you're really happy with the person that wins. Most of these women's matches we still get, revolution my ass, they still suck. They absolutely suck. And what makes you think that even the person you want to see win this, winning this, is going to lead to anything cool on the road to WrestleMania? I don't see it. You know why? Because we have the history that clearly indicates that that is exactly what's going to happen. And not only that, most a lot of these women barely see over the top rope, and now you're going to sit there and have to throw them over. It just... It feels like it's going to be a potential train wreck. It feels like it's going to be really, really bad. And knowing that you've got to stretch this out, because this show is going to be too damn long, this could be a long haul. I almost hope this is the first match so we can get it done and get it the hell out of the way. It may end up mid-carding it, and then God help us all. Who's going to win? The smart money's on Asuka at this moment because you actually see Asuka on the main roster. You can see where the WWE, on the one hand, is presenting her in such a way as saying, it's Asuka, it's Asuka, it's Asuka, it's Asuka. Which is exactly why I believe it's Rousey, 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 Rousey at this point. It's got to be one of those two, unless you throw in the Stephanie Oddball. Nobody else makes sense. Nobody else works. And Rousey would work, especially if Charlotte is the champion on SmackDown, because then you could sit there and have Rousey win the Rumble and go over and feud with Charlotte if that's what you want to do. And then with Raw, with the Elimination Chamber, if you're going to have a women's Elimination Chamber match, which I'm damn sure they're going to, then you could have Asuka win and she could go face Alexa Bliss at WrestleMania. Bob's your uncle, that's the solution. If you're going to sign Ronda Rousey and you're going to bring Ronda Rousey in, are you really going to wait until the Raw after WrestleMania? Are you really going to wait until after the Royal Rumble? Do you really think in your heart of hearts that she is not already signed to a WWE contract knowing goddamn good and well that the WWE leaks stuff to TMZ consistently and does it for a reason and does it for a purpose? They got that story about Ronda eating dinner or whatever with Triple H because the WWE told them about it. I promise you. I promise you. And I know it. I'd be stunned if she's not there in Philly for the Rumble on Sunday. And if she is, then you gotta go there and she's gotta win. Flat out. And then the Men's Royal Rumble. I don't know what to expect out of this because again, with the way things have been built up, you still got 12 of the 30 spots left open. Which you know is going to be a lot of filler and maybe we'll get two or three surprises. Who knows what we'll get. If I remember correctly, we didn't get much in the way of surprises last year. Why can't WWE bother to announce more official entrance? Why can't they do more to actually tie into the Rumble? Like actually having, oh, I don't know, qualifying matches? Or sitting there and putting something on the line and saying the winner of this match gets number 30. The loser of this match gets number 1. Why can't you do stuff like that? It's not that hard! Will we have many surprises? Who's going to be the Iron Man? What's going to go down? What's Kofi's oh shit spot going to be? Um, I know right now the betting favorites include guys like Shinsuke, Roman, Strowman, Cena, Ziggler. F fucking Ziggler, why? Finn Balor for some reason. A and, and then Daniel Bryan. For some reason, Daniel Bryan has become a significant player in this. Like, I think he's right behind Shinsuke in terms of the odds. And from a storyline standpoint... If the WWE has been swerving you this whole time and they've already cleared Daniel Bryan and they're ready to roll and they're going to sit there and say with all the stuff they've done with AJ Styles and the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn stuff with Shane and with a um, Daniel Bryan, the most logical thing to do if you could do it would be to have Daniel Bryan enter the Royal Rumble in 2018 at number 30 in Philadelphia bringing this whole damn thing full circle from what happened three damn years ago. Having him eliminate Roy Roman Reigns last, winning the Royal Rumble, and then you send him off to face AJ Styles at WrestleMania. And I think the key thing here is, is that I would be stunned if both of the Rumble winners aren't ultimately SmackDown talents. Which is where I would think Rousey coming in, you would send her to SmackDown. And I feel like also in this case, with the men's one, the presumptive thing is that it's Roman. 
But that's really weird because if, they, if Raw has Elimination Chamber, why would you have Lesnar defend the title there? At that point in time, you would think you would want to start already setting the table for Roman and Brock at Mania, and you wouldn't want to utilize Lesnar again at, in a match between Rumble and Mania. It'd take more luster off of the appearance than you already have. I don't see that. So I see somebody like a Shinsuke winning, or somebody like a Daniel Bryan, if he was in there, winning. Or somebody like a Strowman winning and going over to SmackDown, even though I don't think that's happening either. Because it sounds like the plans are, is for a mid-card title feud in his future. For Braun Strowman! This stupid-ass company can't get a damn thing right. If they're still going to do Shinsuke versus AJ then Shinsuke should win the Rumble. It would be a big boost, a significant boost, and frankly one that his character really, really badly needs. But if we want to go nuts, and we want to go nuts, and we want to have the whole wrestling world of buzz, and you really want to capitalize off of the buzz that has come from the XFL 2020 announcement, and that to me is still the only reason Vince announced it when he did at the time he did, was because he wanted people to be buzzing about the Royal Rumble coming up Sunday. Because think about it, why the hell did he have to be in a rush to announce it when the league's not even going to be there for two years if it even still ends up ever actually happening? He did that for a reason. Well, if you want to capitalize on that buzz and you really want to get people talking... You gotta clear the dude and let him wrestle. I don't know that it's gonna happen. This could just be people jumping the lurch, making bets that drive the odds uh, more favorable to Daniel Bryan. I still think the smart money's on Shinsuke. I really don't think Roman wins this Rumble because it makes more sense for Roman to win a six person elimination chamber number one contenders match in February than it does to win the Rumble at this point. God, you got to avoid. You can't be that stupid to have him win the Rumble in Philly again, can you? Can you? Can you? Can you? We'll find out Sunday night. But anyways, I am the Slug Daddy, of course, and this is OTRS Central. Remember, not the wrestling show you want. Just the wrestling show you need. Go to Pro Wrestling Tees and buy the damn official OTR Central t-shirt. Check out the Royal Rumble Review Series. Check out some of the other videos on this channel this month. There have been some good ones. And I'll see you Sunday night with the Royal Rumble Review. Later.